Well, hello, friends and followers. Yes, indeed, it's another Drake R4A story here. So I thought that I had this radio perfect, but I didn't. And so I use these every day to make sure they're running good and just to enjoy listening to people on the radio when I'm working at my job. So this one, I have this one on eBay, by the way, but I turned it on and the sensitivity would go down and the meter would not work correctly when it got warm. So seemed like an AVC voltage problem, which I, I suppose it was. And it was interesting what I found wrong with it. So these radios used a, a bridge circuit. So the S meter is working between two tubes in, in a bridge circuit. And so it works between this tube and this tube on one side of the bridge and these two on the other. And so if all that's in balance, this is good. What I found on this radio though was this 12 BA6 tube right here would start to draw more current once it got really hot and that would unbalance the bridge and desensitize the radio. Why it was drawing more current, I don't know. But anyway, before I found that to be a problem, I pretty much replaced all the uh, cathode resistors in uh, in these tubes to make sure that they were drawing enough current. Uh, this 12BE6 with the oscillator, the 5595 oscillator was not, it's, it's cathode resistor was supposed to be 330 ohms. It was 385 ohms, so I corrected that. Anyway, that still didn't get me out of the woods and the whole culprit on this thing was I had a bad 12BA6 tube here that worked, but when it got real hot, when for five minutes, after five minutes, the radio would draw more current from that tube, the plate, current went up and it would unbalance the bridge and the radio would not work very well. So anyway, let's go through again a demo of this radio now, the R4A. And I'm on 20 meters here, just listening to the um, FT8 signals. And you can see that if I detune the radio to a different band, the S meter will fall down to eh, pretty much zero. Let's, let's tweak it here and Get it back to zero here. Get it back to one. It's pretty close now. I'm just tweaking the knob over the side here, and uh, there it is. So now we're pretty much balanced. So as I've changed so much on the radio, it takes time to get to know it now, what, what's working, what's not. But I think now this one's very close to being perfect. So here again is 20 meters. And that's FT8 signals. And it's about, uh, what, 445 p.m. here, December 23rd, not 2022. So 20 meters is still somewhat active, but not terribly. When this radio is working right, in slow AVC, this meter should move very slowly, which it's doing now. And that's what makes the sideband sound really well. Now watch, fast, the meter will jerk. Just like that. And that's how the radio should work. All right, that's 20 meters. Yeah. 
Anyway, I'm really happy with how this radio turned out. Let's go ahead on 15 meters here. I doubt it's active, but we'll try it. Chinese propaganda. Let's try the FT8. Okay. Well, 15's active. Just no one's talking. Let's try 10 meters here. There's 10 right there. Nothing. Let's go back to uh, 40 meters here. Lower sideband, 40 meters. This is one hot radio now. It's really nice. Thank you. 
Okay, here the carrier. Let's notch it out. That's how it's done. Go on. Two signals. The other one. That's 40 meters. Let's check out 80 meters. It's uh, kind of early yet, but we'll see if anything's going on here. There's 80. FT8. Anyway, it's a nice radio. Let's go back to 20 meters here real quick. There's 20, like that. Two 
when he's dead, you know? Except for FT8. One last scan of 15. FT8 on 15 is working. That sounds like DX. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I want to go through what I did to uh, repair this radio and why it's a really fantastic radio for anyone to own besides myself. So, let's get started on that. Disconnect the antenna here. <clears throat> First of all, I cleaned this up extensively on the top deck here. Not that that really matters, but it makes it look nice and cared for. So everything was perfectly clean and detailed. I have new LEDs in here. I have the new correct brake fillers in here. <clears throat> the entire mechanism here was taken apart and cleaned and lubricated and calibrated. So that's a big bonus. I cleaned the front panel up, <clears throat> all the knobs, cleaned up the lenses, all, everything, the meter, put new uh, filters back there for the correct green look, the aqua look. Underneath here, I've spent probably two days on this thing, getting it figured, figured out and perfect. So let's go through what was done under here. So first of all, whenever I work on these drakes, <clears throat> I replaced all the paper capacitors. This was a 0.47. Replace that. Um, this resistor was out of spec, which is in series with the uh, potentiometer here. Got that back in spec. Um, this 12BE6 here that runs the oscillator, it's B+. Plus. I'm sorry, it's cathode resistor was supposed to be 330 ohms. It was 380. That got replaced down there, so it's correct now. And that thing was a bear. That took about half an hour to get that thing replaced. <clears throat> These potentiometers seem to be still calibrated. I cleaned those. Re replaced this coupling capacitor here. 
Anyway, this thing is top notch now. Um, what else did I do under here? So, yeah, this thing had some hum in it. It seemed in the very beginning, and then I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. So, I really uh, went to town here. Replaced this capacitor here. I just pretty much went through and replaced all the paper stuff. They look bad. I added two power filtering capacitors here. There's no ripple here. There's maybe like like 1.8 volts of ripple right there, but it doesn't affect anything. I couldn't remove that ripple. This is a cathode resistor got replaced. Um, this all seemed okay here. The power supply, I just wasn't too assured that the diodes in there weren't leaky, so. I went ahead through here and replaced the uh, rectifiers with uh, 500 volt PIV diodes, and those are all right here. It's little diodes. There's, there's two for the B plus, and there's one here for the minus voltage for the uh, AGC. If there's any ripple in this thing, it's going to cause havoc. And I also replaced uh, capacitor there for the uh, minus uh, 30 volts to make that correct. So it's been gone through carefully. Replaced this capacitor here. Um, just pretty much went through this thing blanketly and replaced any kind of uh, suspicious looking paper capacitors and it really really works now well I'm really happy with it and like I said the 12 BA6 tube on top was, was funky that got replaced that was causing a lot of diff difficulties um, I did put in a uh, better performing 12 BA6 again whoops wherever, wherever it went bunch of tubes here I've been swapping them all around but I finally got this thing perfect as far as tubes um, I also cleaned this, uh, wafer switch extensively to detox it, um, put grease back here for that, um, uh, detent, that was kind of, kind of messy. This wafer here was a little bindy, and I got it to unbind by actually bending this a bit to get it back in alignment with the axle, and I put a very small amount of WD-40, um, right where it hits the surface where it turns and that helped that immensely so this thing is yeah you can turn the band switch now and it's very smooth and tidy so i'm really really happy with this radio i did detox all the pots here that's not very difficult um check that the uh 150 volts here was correct and it is with the ob2 yeah it's a good radio detoxed all that um, I finally got it to where I want it to be, and you can see by the performance that it works very, very well. Calibrated this guy with WV, WWV, so the radio is good for me to keep. I love it. It's probably the best R4A or R I've ever had as far as how well it works. This is also the older 13 tube version, and I see it holding up very fine against the uh, 11 tube version. It's this. This is no different. It's really, really good. Yeah, I think this resistor here was um, coupled to the audio transformer, and so when I place this, it has a lot more audio. The audio output tube was good. So anyway, that's my little treatise, treat, T-R-E-A-T-S-E, -E, treatise on this radio. It's a very nice radio. Um, I think anyone who, uh, who buys this will love it. Um, I have it on eBay, but it, it might also be a keeper. I know I always say I'm gonna keep these radios and people tend to buy them, but I, I like fixing them, it's a big challenge. I like the puzzle of it, getting it all figured out, and uh, that's how it is. They're really great radios. It has a small defect here. Somebody broke off the uh, knob a little bit, but still, you can still turn it. it. It shouldn't need much twiddling now that I fixed the circuitry for the ABC. And for the S meter, it shouldn't have any issues now. I think everything just was going bad, and the uh, the previous owner probably was always twiddling that well, twiddling that knob. But now it's it's all set. Um, I also heard something kind of clunking in this thing, and I, sure enough, a little a little part in here, a little phenolic uh, guide pin was off in here. So I took this apart and fixed that. Um, Replace the AGC 12 AB, AB6 tube. This tube seems fine. These seem fine. The mixture seems fine. Yep, RF amp is fine. All these are in spec now, so 
again, I'm really happy with this radio. And I guess to prove it out, I could fire it back up again. Turn it back on. Put the antenna back in the back of it here. That's where the antenna goes. And let's pop in the speaker, which I use, and the headphone jack, which is the same thing, basically. But I pop in some speakers here, and that gets the radio running. Okay, I was on 20 meters here. Let's go back to 40. There's 40. And this is what you want to see when the radio comes on. This should be zero. When it heats up, it should it should kind of go down a bit. So you want to let it sit for 10 minutes before you mess with the S meter. When you first turn it on, it, the tubes heat up at me, self-adjust, so I'm waiting for that, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so 40 meters again. And... Chinese. Some Texas guy on here. Wow. And also, you want to check the calibration on these, so head over here and uh, find something that's not busy. Like over here, turn the calibrate on, and you can get this thing uh, basically netted where you want it, and get this thing to zero. There you go. And that should track at zero kilocycles. So when you head over here, well, that's off a little bit. Let's redo it. Anyway, the band's so busy, it's hard to even figure out the, uh, the frequency here. It's pretty good. Okay, what else? This should have the same characteristics. So when I'm on, say, 2.4, look at those dots, and that should be the bottom of the band pass. So lower zero upper that's how you know a drake works right lower hear the sound changing same with a 1.2 okay that's how you know your drake is working right If it's a tad off, you can just adjust it. This one's a tad off, so let's fix it right now. There. There we go. That fixed that. Pretty perfect now. There you go. 
It's a great radio. I'm loving it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.